everybody, welcome back. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the Diabetes Coach, with another episode of the Diabetes Coach on the Go. And uh, today I want to talk to you about something I think is really important, and this is five causes of insulin resistance. Many people have different theories on what causes insulin resistance. We hear it's too much fat in the diet, too many carbohydrates in the diet, just being too fat. So we're going to break that down today and talk about five causes of insulin resistance. Now, before I get into that, let me talk to you a little bit about what insulin resistance is. And we'll talk about what insulin is. So insulin is a hormone that's released by the beta cells of the pancreas. And it has many different functions in the body. It uh, largely controls energy homeostasis. It uh, upregulates uh, certain gene expression. It's uh, involved in the transport of nutrients into cells. That's typically what we think about it. And it kind of turns on and turns off different mechanisms in the body. Uh, based on certain enzymes and so forth. So for example, insulin will activate GLUT2 and GLUT4 receptors, which allow sugar to get into various types of cells in the body, liver cells, heart cells, fat cells, muscle cells. And um, it also acts on the liver to suppress ketogenesis, for example, uh, gluc uh, gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, so the breakdown of glycogen, the production of glucose, and release of glucose by the liver. So when we don't have enough insulin, things go wrong. Uh, our fuel and glucose homeostasis goes haywire, and our blood sugar goes up, and uh, we are not able to properly store nutrients, so we start melting through our muscle tissue, through our fat tissue, through our uh, glucose. And that's what happens in type 1 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, uh, most of the time we see that there is, because of the insulin resistance, which we'll talk about in a minute, there's elevated insulin levels. So it leads to accumulation of energy storage, accumulation of fat tissue. Uh, our, our glycogen stores get jammed full of glycogen. There's an overflow of glucose, an overflow of free fatty acids and uh, we get high lipids and high glucose in the blood. So what causes this insulin resistance state and what actually is insulin resistance? So uh, insulin, as I talked about, will help to transport uh, nutrients, particularly we're talking about macronutrients, especially fat in particular, and glucose and amino acids as well uh, into the cells. And our cells can become resistant to the effects of this hormone, insulin. So think about insulin. We think of hormones like a key and lock mechanism. So think of uh, insulin like a key that goes into a lock on the cell membrane, which is called a receptor. And that key opens these doors uh, in muscle cells, for example. It activates this GLUT4 mechanism, which enables us to carry glucose into those cells, but also free fatty acids, um, fats, and uh, amino acids, and so forth. So we need insulin to, to enable these uh, nutrients, these macronutrients, to be carried into our cells. And fat, free fatty acids, and glucose molecules go into our mitochondria to get burned for fuel, turned into something called ATP, which is cellular energy. So uh, we need that insulin to be able to make this happen, uh, at least in sort of normal steady state response. There's different things that happen during exercise in other states, but uh, during regular sort of normal state, we need insulin to make these things happen. These cells become insulin resistant. And so uh, that key doesn't work. The key doesn't unlock the door to allow glucose, fat, amino acids to get into the cell. So we get this buildup outside of the cell, this overflow phenomenon, it's called. So uh, 
what actually causes that insulin resistance? So there's five things that I'm going to talk to you about today. And again, some people say, well, it's just a bad diet, eating too much fat, it gums up the receptors, or uh, eating too much carbohydrate raises insulin, which makes us insulin resistant. And there's some truth to all of those, but it's not quite as simple as that. So I'm going to break that down for you. So the first one is what's called desensitization. So desensitization is basically where uh, too much insulin causes insulin resistance. Just like an alcoholic gets desensitized to alcohol, a drug addict gets desensitized to certain medications. If you're in a, a concert uh, and it's really loud at first, and then uh, you get used to it, so you get desensitized to the noise. Well, if we have large amounts of insulin in the bloodstream from eating a lot of processed refined carbohydrates and other insulin insulinogenic foods, insulin-stimulating foods, uh, it can actually uh, cause a chronically elevated level of insulin. The receptors actually become desensitized and down-regulated so they don't respond to insulin, it really as a protective mechanism. So uh, that can happen. That does tend to be fairly short-term. So when you stop bathing your cells in insulin, those insulin receptors can get upregulated again, or your body can actually start to create more insulin receptors. So um, the good news about that one is it can be changed fairly quickly once you change the environment that the cells live in. So for example, if you go on a low carb diet and you stop secreting so much insulin, then uh, your cells will become resensitized to insulin. The second cause of insulin resistance that I want to talk about today is inflammation, chronic systemic inflammation, where we've got these circulating inflammatory cytokines, these infl inflammation signals. And uh, these have been shown to inhibit insulin signal transduction, or basically uh, insulin signaling, the communication that happens when the insulin binds to the insulin receptor. So these cytokines, and uh, there's a few you may have heard of, TNF-alpha is one of them, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-8. CRP, C-reactive protein, is another one that's an acute phase reactant. These uh, have been shown to interfere with insulin signaling. So anything that drives chronic systemic inflammation, food sensitivities, intestinal hyperpermeability, which leads to inflammation in the gut, other uh, toxins and other things that can drive an inflammatory response, a high percentage of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids can drive an inflammatory response. Anything that drives inflammation, which can stimulate the release of these inflammatory cytokines, chronic infections, for example, can do it as well, can cause insulin resistance at the cell level as well. The third cause I'll mention is toxins. And these toxins that have been shown to cause insulin resistance at the cell level are called uh, diabetogens. And these diabetogens, things like phthalates, for example, BPA, bisphenol A, uh, BPS as well, and there's a whole host of other toxins. These toxins can interfere with the ability of insulin to bind to its receptor. Some of these actually bind to insulin receptors and uh, kind of clog up these insulin receptors leading to insulin resistance. So toxins are another uh, key thing. So doing a detoxification program, reducing your exposure to these toxins, uh, helping to flush these out of your body can be helpful in reducing insulin resistance as well. Okay, the fourth factor that I'll mention that can cause insulin resistance is lipotoxicity. So here's the one that you'll hear some people talking about in relationship to a high fat diet, but it turns out it's actually not eating fat, but poorly metabolizing fat that leads to the lipotoxicity in the cell. So there are certain things like free fatty acids. We know elevated free fatty acids can kind of clog up the insulin receptors, 
and interfere with insulin signaling. There's something called uh, ACEL-CoA, which is a breakdown product of fat that can inhibit insulin signaling. And there is a compound, uh, a class of compounds called ceramides, which are related to fat, fatty acids that can do the same thing, can be toxic to the insulin receptors and interfere with insulin signaling. And these all are part of uh, lipotoxicity, so how uh, toxic fat can be to insulin sensitivity. Now, the key here is to make sure that you're burning fat, not storing fat, and that you don't have a lot of free fatty acids floating around in your bloodstream that you're actually metabolizing fat properly. And the best ways to do that are eating a low carbohydrate diet and being in an energy deficit rather than an energy surplus. So you're burning fat rather than storing it. The reason we wanna do low carbohydrate, by the way, is if we're eating high carbs, we're gonna burn sugar preferentially. And all that fat, whether it's coming from our diet or it's already in our body, is just going to float around and not get burned very effectively. So we want to do low carbs so our bodies are uh, forced to upregulate fat burning in the mitochondria. Then we want to be in an energy deficit so we're actually forced to burn our stored body fat. And we want to get uh, make sure we're getting plenty of exercise, cardiovascular resistance and um, high-intensity interval training to burn that fat in the muscle cells and in the in the bloodstream so to reduce free fatty acids and then we won't have that lipotoxicity in, in the um, uh, around the cells in the insulin receptors all right and finally the fifth factor that i'm going to talk about today that causes insulin resistance is called physiological insulin resistance so physiological ins insulin resistance there's several types actually and uh, the first is called adaptive physiological insulin resistance. And that's when we're on either a very low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet. Uh, so what happens, the body does something called glucose sparing. So it will cause uh, a physiological peripheral, that means kind of the muscles, the outside of the body, not the central part of the body or the brain, peripheral insulin resistance because the body wants to shunt glucose to the brain. So it's going to spare glucose, save it for the brain, and save it for the red blood cells, which uh, really need uh, glucose. The brain can use ketones as well for fuel, but it, you know, it likes glucose, and the body tends to want to preserve that glucose for the brain. So it, uh, it will make our muscle cells and our other parts of our body more insulin resistant so that we have that, so we don't take up that glucose in the periphery, we have it available for the brain. The interesting thing about that is as soon as you uh, take in some more carbohydrates, that insulin resistance goes away almost immediately. So it's a very short-term adaptive response it's actually healthy, it's not unhealthy, and it's not associated with diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and prediabetes. Another type of physiological insulin resistance is uh, when we're under stress and release, when we release high amounts of cortisol. Cortisol is a glucocorticoid, and it actually causes insulin resistance, whole body insulin resistance. So it suppresses insulin function. It actually suppresses insulin production in the beta cells of the pancreas. It causes us to dump glucose out of our liver uh, to break down glycogen, to undergo what's called gluconeogenesis, and uh, actually increase lipolysis. So it causes us to make more fat as well in the liver and it prevents us from utilizing those fuels because uh, really its chief goal is to liberate this energy from storage into the bloodstream. So it actually causes insulin resistance in the muscles, it causes muscle wasting, it causes a whole body insulin resistance, and that would be considered a physiological insulin resistance because once the cortisol levels decrease, the insulin sensitivity comes back. Uh, also, melatonin can do this. Low uh, states of low melatonin in people who have sleep disturbance also leads to insulin resistance. So, supplementing melatonin can actually increase insulin sensitivity. So, uh, once melatonin levels are restored, 
uh, people become more insulin sensitive again. So there's five different causes of insulin resistance. And uh, so it's not just as simple as eating too much fat or uh, eating too many carbohydrates or too much sugar. We have to actually look at the mechanisms behind this. And that's why individualized, personalized uh, medicine or care really is the best at helping people to address the underlying root causes of insulin resistance and to fix those causes so that they become more insulin sensitive and can get better control of their blood sugar, uh, lose stubborn weight if they need to, and uh, restore uh, normal lipid levels as well, glucose and lipid levels. Okay, guys, so I hope that makes sense. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. You'll find some reference articles down below this video, so check those out, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care.